Let's talk about kitchen zones, but not the boring kitchen zones. Seriously, nobody uses the word zones when they're describing the areas of their kitchen. I asked for your help in rezoning the kitchen and boy, did you ever pull through with some great ideas. Starting with my favorite, the most important zone in my kitchen, the chip cupboard. For as long as I can remember, in, in every house I've ever lived in, even when I was a child, I remember having a cabinet or cupboard that was dedicated to potato chips. In all my years of designing kitchens, no one has ever said to me, I have to make sure there's a cabinet for my chips. I mean, most people are just too embarrassed to say that, but it is essential. We like our junk food and we need a special place for it. And maybe you're not into junk food and you're not into potato chips, but I guarantee you that if you have keto treats laying around, they're probably in a special place in your kitchen. One of the most prominent areas, at least in my kitchen, and one that I've talked about in other videos, which I'll link in the description below, is the junk drawer. The junk drawer is a staple in many North American homes, at least, and probably the world over. We need a place to put all the little trinkets and things that don't have a home and they have to go somewhere and so they end up going in a drawer. The video in the description below reveals what's inside my junk drawer. I invite you to go look at that after you've watched this video. Rarely do I have clients come to me and say, okay, where's my junk drawer? going to be located. Usually when we renovate a kitchen, we think that we're going to get rid of the junk drawer because we're going to live differently now that we have a new kitchen. But that's rarely the case. We just need a place for our junk and it normally ends up in a drawer. The junk drawer is an essential zone in any kitchen. And here's where you, the viewer, really started to pull through for me on our live stream to give me some ideas for this video of some brand new kitchen zones and I was pleasantly surprised. Here we go. Pile up the dishes zone. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. We can all relate to this zone after a big meal. Maybe we've had family over, especially after a holiday of some sort, and the dishes just start piling, piling, piling out of the sink, on the countertop, up, up, and up, and up, till you can't see anymore. And while in a perfect world, we would like this just to disappear at the snap of a finger, that's not the way it normally happens. Sometimes, depending on your lifestyle and how busy you are and whatever, those dishes can pile up maybe for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Not in this house, but maybe in your house, they can pile up and you need a place for that. So that is an important place in your kitchen where the dishes pile up. Now this next one really made me laugh. <laughs> I love this one. Waiting for my IKEA back order zone. Waiting for the IKEA back order zone. Now, yeah, this isn't a real zone in your kitchen, obviously, because, well, you wouldn't even have a kitchen because you're waiting for it to come in. I'm in the middle of a nightmare remodel zone. Oh no, Susan. You might be waiting for cabinets. You don't even have a zone. There's no place for dishes. There's no cleaning zone. There's no anything because all your cabinets are on a ship somewhere or they're back ordered from some factory and you just don't have anything and you're stuck waiting. Admin zone, paying the bills, dropping mail. Can you relate to the mail drop zone? In our house, there's this little section of countertop where we come in, we throw the mail on there. It's an important factor in any home. It's gotta go somewhere. The mail drop zone, love it. Zone for brooms, thank you. This is what I'm talking about. The broom zone. Now I have to admit, I don't think brooms belong in a kitchen. They should be in a closet somewhere else and taken out when you need them. But many, many people keep their brooms in their kitchen, tucked in beside something, hanging somewhere, just somewhere in the kitchen and it looks gross. <laughs> okay, it's just a broom sticking there. The problem is I never thought it was worth spending hundreds of dollars on one cabinet just to stick a broom in there. I mean, hang it on a wall somewhere, put it in your mudroom or in a closet or stick it somewhere underneath your couch, it doesn't matter. When you are designing your next kitchen or having someone design your kitchen and you know that there's gonna be a broom hanging around your kitchen somewhere and you're not gonna be able to put that broom somewhere else because you're habitually keeping a broom in your kitchen, plan for that, have a broom zone. The barbecue spice zone. Depending on how many spices you use, how many spices you have and how you cook and the type of food you cook will determine the size of the cabinet that you need for this type of zone, but having a place for spices is essential. It is a real zone in a kitchen. And this is a request that I get quite often when I'm designing kitchens. We need a place for all the spices. We cook this way or that way, and we have this type of spices or these kind of bottles, these type of oils. The barbecue spice zone or just the spice zone is a real essential part of any kitchen. Pet food zone. I thought this was a good one. The pet food zone. Maisie, come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you doing this to me? Everybody needs a place for their pet food. Now our poor dog's food just goes under the sink. She's only a little thing, she doesn't need a lot of food. Oh, I know. Thank you, thank you. Maybe you have more than one dog, or you have a cat, or you have a parakeet, or you have a lizard. I don't know what you have, but you probably have pets, and you need a place for their food, and you don't want it to be an afterthought. So if you do have pets, 
plan in your next kitchen design to have a place to keep and store their food. They'll really appreciate it. This next one's really good. It is definitely a zone that I have in my kitchen and you probably have in yours as well, but it is the medicine cabinet. Many people keep their medicine in their bathrooms, but we keep our medicine and all our vitamins and all the weird things that Amy buys in the kitchen. <laughs> the ashwagandha and the curcetin and all this other stuff, broccoli pills, they're all stored in the kitchen cabinet. And if you have one of those, give me a thumbs up for this video. Yeah, your kitchen's filled with food and all your dishes and all the other stuff, but medicine is an important thing to have and it needs to be handy so that we can access them with ease in our kitchen. This one made me laugh, the mismatched Tupperware zone. How many of you have had company and you end up at the end of the night with a whole new collection of Tupperware, the lids don't match, someone has your lid to this and you have a dish that goes to theirs and it's just all jams into one cabinet. We get this pile of Tupperware that we can barely get the drawer closed because it's everywhere. Tupperware and plastic dishes, it's such a big part of our lives and it needs its own zone. Anyway, you probably have a Tupperware zone, let me know if you do. This next zone is one that I came up with all by myself and it really reflects what I've seen from clients asking me when I'm designing their kitchens. They need a place in their kitchen that fits it's their height. I've had clients say to me, I need my island to be lowered or I need a section of cabinets to be lowered because I'm short. And because I'm short, the cabinets are too high or I can't reach things and it bugs me and I'm spending all this money to get a new kitchen, I want it to fit me. I think that's a great zone to have and a great approach to designing your new kitchen so that it fits you, works for you, and if you are shorter or taller, whatever the case may be, it's important to have an area of your kitchen that fits your height so your back's not broken or your shoulders aren't cramped up all the time, especially if you use the kitchen a lot. Now this next zone or area is a grouping of places and I call this the what you're into zone. Do you bake? Do you make wine? Do you ferment things? Do you can things? Do you do specific things in your kitchen as a hobby or a craft or whatever that you use your kitchen for? And it is important to think about in your next kitchen renovation that I have a zone and a place for this activity that I do all the time. The coffee zone in our house is so important. I mean, look at this beauty. I mean, would you look at it? Look, it's got an on button and that's about it. That's all we need is an on button. It's got these other things, I don't know what they do but having a place for this is essential. It sits on a countertop in our kitchen, but without this, life as we know it would just be so totally different. Well, I'll put a link to one of these babies in the description below. If you wanna get your hands on one of these, I highly recommend you do it. If you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell and notification so that you can be notified when I upload videos. All of your kitchen zones are only important if your kitchen is trendy. And if it's not trendy, then there's no point in continuing. So make sure you check out this video on my not so talked about kitchen trends that you need to make sure you incorporate into your kitchen. Have a great week, bye.